Love Tells the Truth by Daryl L. Heath Chapter 2 Creation or Evolution <clears throat> There are those who say that the problem at hand is evolution versus faith. That is not the right statement because evolution cannot be accepted apart from a tremendous amount of faith. There must be great faith exercised by the evolutionist in the process of the beginning of the material that it takes a real stretch of believing as to how everything came into existence. Evolutionists have no concept that is vaguely believable about how anything had a beginning, how something came from nothing. If they say, an amoeba, where did the amoeba come from? If they say cosmic dust, where did the dust come from? If they say Big Bang, <clears throat> there had to be something to go bang. By their theory, there would have to be an egg before a chicken. What about mammals? Did they start out as babies of some sort in some kind of natural womb that had no life in itself? If so, who took care of the babies before they were old enough and big enough to take care of themselves? But the evolutionists say, the Bible record says that everything was created in six days, and yet scientists know that the universe and the earth have been around for billions of years and we have fossils to prove it. To prove what exactly? Return to the chicken. If it came into existence as a chicken instead of an egg, then it had an age on it and anyone who is not willingly ignorant knows that the chicken had to be before the egg. Someone tells of an atheist who asked a little girl, Tell me, which came first, the chicken or the egg? To which the girl replied, Why would the chicken come first? Because God couldn't lay an egg. Now that is supposed to be funny, but I am pathetically state that God wouldn't lay an egg since that would bring on a more complicated method of creation. Why not let the created things do some part? Why not let the chicken lay the egg and take care of what follows? <clears throat> now take man. If he didn't start out as an egg and a sperm in some freakish womb of nature, he couldn't come into conscious life as a baby and survive. But if he was created a grown man, at least old enough to help himself to fruit and vegetables, then he had age in him. If a man was created, say, 20 years of age, why would it be a great problem for God to create a world with billions of years of age on it? And in it, fossils. Too big of an intellectual problem? Not if the Creator, God, was omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. Have the evolutionists come up with anything or any kind of believable explanation for the things and the people that exist today? They have never brought forth proof of the one thing they must have a missing link between two species one thing that bothers me in particular is that evolution is supposed to move from lower to higher if that is what happens then why doesn't man improve morally why is mankind becoming more cruel and wicked 
Stamped on my own heart are the evils that were almost unheard of a few short years ago that have increased to epidemic proportions, especially abuse against spouses, children, and society in general. Also, murders have increased. Children killing teachers and other children in school shootings, parents killing one another and their children, and children killing parents. If evolution is a fact, and it is not, why hasn't it improved our society? The Bible-believing person has the only real answer there is to the existence of all things, including man. That answer is, in the beginning, God. For there was a beginning, and it was not an amoeba, or cosmic dust, or a big bang. The beginning is simply stated, in the beginning, God created. To create is to cause to come into existence, to bring forth something from nothing. What did he create? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1.1 Genesis 2.1 Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Genesis chapter 1 records the creation of all things, animate and inanimate. And chapter 2, verse 1, as quoted, sums up the creation. We now have scientists that have conceded that there is intelligent design involved in all the things that exist in this universe. Actually, this is a concession that there was a creator, God, that brought it all into existence. For how could there be intelligent design without someone having the intelligence? Actually, it is almost impossible for me to believe that anyone can study the things that exist and come in to the conclusion that the function and the intricateness of many things in the universe could develop by evolution. The human body is so amazing. It has a hundred thousand miles of blood vessels that carry food elements and oxygen-rich blood to the vital organs and every cell in the body. The heart beats a hundred thousand times in a single day and pumps five quarts of blood through its chambers every minute. It does enough work every day to lift a five-ton weight over a foot off the ground. The brain stores everything you see, hear, feel, smell, taste, and think for future use, while loading and directing the muscles and body organs to do what needs to be done at any given moment. Trees and plants, through death and resurrection in nature, are continually restoring and protecting the land for our future. And as they live, the water evaporation from their leaves acts as a great air conditioner for us. David said in Psalms, chapter 8, verses 3 and 4, When I consider the heavens and the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visits him? What David was saying, I believe, is when I consider, study, and learn all about the sun, moon, stars, and the great universe with the movement of all those heavenly bodies in their travels in space, that the great creative power has produced. I marvel that you love this tiny speck of a man and think about me and have plans for my life. How can people study the things that are 
and what they contribute to us and say that it is all just evolved. But here is the great catch for all creation rejecting people of all ages. If they were created, they are responsible to the one who created them for their moral actions. And if they are responsible creatures who can choose right or wrong, if they are able to make moral choices, they are also accountable to their creator and will give an account to him. Romans chapter 14 verse 12. So then, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. As an evidence of God creating man, giving him intelligence and showing him to be responsible, look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth on the earth. As created in the image of God, and told by God to subdue the earth, one thing man would possess would be the intelligence to invent the technological wonders of our day. I remember when I was a young lad hearing someone predict that because of an increasing population and the depletion of our land and natural resources, we Americans would be in a state of starvation in about 35 years. That person had no clue of God's providential care for the creation. He did not know that man would invent better fertilizers, hybrid and other good seed, develop the use of insecticides, large tractors and equipment, good farming methods, and conservation of water, timber, and other resources to produce plenty of good food and everything else we would need. God lets man invent what he needs, for he gave him the gift of intelligence. Evolution did not do it. The truth is, man does not want to live the way his creator planned for him to live. They don't want to follow God's rules. They want to make their own rules, and the only way they can do this is to reject the creator and his rules as found in his rule book, the Bible. The nobleman in Luke chapter 19, verse 13, said to his servants, he was leaving in charge of his business, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him, and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man reign over us. This occupy till I come is, in actuality, the same command God gave to Adam and Eve, and all of us, when he said, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion. And many Americans, like the nobleman's servants, reply, We will not have this man to reign over us. An Act of the Will in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 5, Peter talks about people who are willfully ignorant. They don't want to know. They reject the truth. They will not listen to truth. Pilate once asked, what is truth? As previously stated, he didn't really have to ask. 
he already knew. But not being willing to buck public opinion to stand on the truth, he pretended he did not know what truth was. In John chapter 8, verse 32, Jesus has said, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And John chapter 14, verse 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And John chapter 8, verse 36 says, If the Son of Man therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. The true Christians are telling you the truth. And Galatians chapter 4, verse 16, I am therefore become your enemy, because I tell you the truth? And Jesus, in John chapter 8, verse 40, And now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I have heard from God. Romans chapter 1, verse 17 through 32, teaches that people who reject the rules of God in their lives will eventually destroy themselves by being deserted by their Creator, who would like to be their Savior and guide. The key to the passage is in Romans chapter 1, verse 25, and it is pure evolutionary on the part of those who reject God's creation for the devil's lie of evolution. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever? What is the lie for which man exchanged the truth of creation? It is a threefold lie of Satan found in Genesis chapter 3. First, Satan said to Eve in verse 1, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? He cast doubt on the word of God. Verses 2 and 3, Eve replies, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch of it, lest ye die. Second, in verse 4, Satan lies to Eve. Ye shall not surely die. Thirdly, in verse 5, Satan tempts her to disobey God. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then our eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Or, you can be your own God. You can be God. That is the stuff of evolution. That is the stuff of the New Age. It's the same old lie. It's the same old sin. You can make your own rules.